Uh, this show has been on the air for about three years now. And in that time, our staff has developed some weird skills. Skills like spotting fake crowds and models employed for political purposes. So like the Newt Gingrich campaign website showing this group of fresh-faced Americans all looking excitedly toward Newt Gingrich for the answers. But the other things that we found them doing were things like uh, talking on their cell phones all at once and engaging in various patriotic activities all at once and looking up at the sky for no apparent reason. These are all stock photos of this crowd available for purchase. Also, when the Koch brothers wanted to make it look like firefighters were going to one of their rallies for Republicans ahead of the 2010 elections, they purchased this picture of fireman buddies from the website iStockPhoto.com. There's a ton of these things. Well, yesterday we thought we had found the most unusual one, maybe the best one ever, uh, when a blog called Good As You figured out that this anti-gay website in New Hampshire hadn't just bought a picture of a fake, supposedly anti-gay crowd from a stock photo website. They actually stole the crowd from a picture of a Barack Obama campaign rally in Columbus, Ohio in 2008. We thought that was maybe the best innovation in the fake model, fake crowd field ever. But today we have managed to top that. It is also a Koch Brothers ad. It's an Americans for Prosperity ad um, in support of Republican Governor Scott Walker of Wisconsin and his union busting bill that brought Wisconsinites out into the streets for months this year. The Koch Brothers want you to know that despite all of the complaining from those crowds, from those stupid firefighters and teachers and stuff, they want you to know that really everything is fine in Wisconsin. Watch. They told us the sky would fall and Wisconsin would end as we know it. But the sky's still there, and Wisconsin is stronger than ever. Now wait. Look at these folks. This is the best thing ever. I swear we've done so many of these. This is the best one ever. This is an innovation in this field. I did not know that you could buy stock photos that move. You see the family right here? Watch this. Watch. See? Same family. So is this a real Wisconsin family that's really excited about how awesome Wisconsin is now that Scott Walker has getting, gotten rid of union rights? Are they super psyched about how the sky hasn't fallen in Wisconsin? No, what these folks are is family on bridge waves. You can find them at a part of iStockPhoto.com that is reserved for moving images. It is iStock video. The best thing is, is that if you let it play all the way through, you can see that the actors sort of get bummed out and tired from all the waving. At the end, the girl, they sort of drop the girl. Oh, okay, all right, take two. <laughs> it is amazing to me still uh, that guys as rich as the Koch brothers, the two of them have more money than Warren Buffett. It is amazing to me still that these crusading, conservative, billionaire, billionaire activist brothers who have more money than God, and yet they don't spend any of that money. They don't get off their wallet and hire people to pretend to be Wisconsin families that like Scott Walker. Instead, they buy them online, cheap. Frankly, it might be nice if they would hire some real people in Wisconsin to impersonate people who like Scott Walker, because since Scott Walker has been governor of Wisconsin, the unemployment rate there has gone up from 7.4% to 7.9%. All the more reason why the Koch brothers have to fund a campaign called It's Working to describe how awesome Scott Walker has been for that state. The real people of Wisconsin were really not happy with Scott Walker and Republicans in that state stripping away their union rights, particularly because Wisconsin is where a lot of America's union rights were born because people fought for those rights. And then Wisconsin Republicans elected in 2010 got rid of them. People were not happy about that in Wisconsin. And I doubt that anybody in Wisconsin is happy about soaring unemployment rates there under Governor Scott Walker. But now, real people, uh, not, not the nice family on bridge waving fake people at iStockPhoto.com, but real Wisconsinites are angry enough that they are trying to recall Governor Scott Walker. Yesterday, Democrats in the state kicked off the start of their campaign to try to remove Governor Walker from office. Over the next few weeks, Walker's opponents will be holding a series of public rallies and meetings across the state, all leading up to November 15th. That'll be the official start of a 60-day effort to collect more than 540,000 signatures to get Governor Scott Walker of Wisconsin recalled. The Wisconsin press is already starting to float potential Democratic candidates to run against Mr. Walker should the recall effort be successful. Uh, the names include former Democratic Congressman Dave Obey, uh, former Dane County Executive Kathleen Falk, and Democratic State Senator. Senator John Erpenbach, who you may recognize as a frequent guest on this show. Up against the Koch brothers funded, uh, populated by models, it's working campaign. 
uh, the real human Wisconsinites are going to be launching their recall Scott Walker campaign under the banner, uh, It's Not Working. The effort against Scott Walker in Wisconsin has an obvious parallel in nearby Ohio, where people mad about the union stripping bill there uh, don't legally have the power to recall their Republican governor, but they do legally have the ability to recall that law, and it looks like they might do. Uh, the latest polling out of the Buckeye State showing that Ohioans want to repeal Ohio's union stripping bill there by a 25-point margin. Anger with the Republican governor who pushed that law through has also dropped his approval rating, John Kasich's approval rating, down to 36 percent. The polling firm conducting that poll noting in their summary, quote, the good news, if there is good news in this survey for Governor Kasich, is that he has another three years until he faces re-election. But again, Governor Scott Walker in Wisconsin does not have that three-year luxury. If they succeed in getting Walker on the ballot, dragging that union-stripping law behind him, Wisconsinites will have a chance to vote him out of office probably sometime early next year. And so the Koch brothers have Scott Walker's back. The Koch brothers will buy as many fake families waving from as many fake bridges as they need to in order to make it look like somebody <laughs> supports their union stripping governor. They've also got the real Scott Walker out tonight speaking at a Heritage Foundation event in Des Moines, Iowa. The Heritage Foundation, of course, also a Koch brothers funded enterprise. Scott Walker is trying to burnish his image nationwide uh, and across the state of Wisconsin uh, from his Koch brother billionaire benefactors. But trying to make it look like it's working, which is the name of their campaign for him, trying to make like, it look like it's working even when you have stripped everybody's rights and everybody's really mad at you and unemployment in your state is still going up, trying to make it look right, that doesn't just mean PR. It also means trying to look busy in the state capitol. And so for the second time since he's been governor, even though he's not even bothering to stay in the state tonight, for example, Scott Walker has called the Wisconsin legislature back for a special legislative session that is focused on jobs, jobs, jobs. We talked about this last week. They have branded this jobs-centric, jobs-focused, jobs, 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 all about jobs, very special legislative job session. Uh, they have branded it Back to Work Wisconsin. As we noted last week, one of the things that they are doing in their make it, work like, make it look like you're working on jobs, Back to Work Wisconsin special legislative session, uh, one of the things they did was uh, work on getting rid of sex ed. Jobs, jobs, jobs. Uh, eliminating all discussion of contraception in Wisconsin public schools. This is apparently the Republicans' jobs agenda under Scott Walker. And that wasn't just a one-off thing. The Republicans have been doing all of their regular Republican stuff in this special job session and just calling it jobs because it's a special job session. And so last night, one Democratic legislator had enough and just started live tweeting all of the things Republicans were actually working on that they were calling jobs. At 8.14 p.m. last night, for example, Democratic Representative Corey Mason tweeted, quote, debating SJR 28, honoring crisis pregnancy centers. Crisis pregnancy centers are those uh, religious anti-abortion fake health centers where you think you're going to go get medical advice, but they just lecture you about not having an abortion. That was um, jobs legislation, apparently. Also, we have passed a resolution in favor of National Adoption Awareness Month. AJR 67. There was also AB 212, which makes it a crime to throw bodily substances at peace officers, debated and passed. A little later, AB 290 on home brewing being debated. So you've got your sex ed, you got your adoption, you got your anti-abortion activism being honored. You got no throwing pee at cops, you got to make your own beer at home. And as of 9.29 p.m. last night, uh, what was going on in the Wisconsin special Scott Walker jobs, jobs, jobs legislative session? According to Representative Corey Mason at the time, quote, no jobs bills, but now we are discussing definition of bicycles. Joining us now is the Democratic State Representative who had been live tweeting the Jobs Jobs definition of bicycle special session in the great state of Wisconsin, uh, Representative Corey Mason of Racine. Uh, Representative Mason, thanks very much for joining us tonight. Thanks for having me on, Rachel. Um, there is a brilliant PR effort underway to try to make it look like uh, the issue of jobs is really the first priority in what's being worked on in your state uh, by your governor and by Republicans in the legislature. Uh, from your perspective, what is actually being worked on? Well, nothing about jobs. I mean, I, I'm delighted to debate issues like adoption or whether or not you can buy a drink at a county fair or what the definition of a bicycle is. But right now, we have a jobs crisis in Wisconsin, and we're not doing anything in the legislature to address it. 
The effort uh, to recall the governor in Wisconsin, um, if it does in fact get under the ballot, probably has some national implications in the sense that both uh, Governor Walker and John Kasich of Ohio really have personified this year's this year's breed of Republican politician, the union busting stuff, uh, big, big, big money support from the billionaire Koch brothers who have been among Governor Walker's biggest contributors. Uh, I mean, obviously what he's done is not popular in the state, but how do you as a Democrat uh, compete with the amount of money that he can marshal on his side? Well, the problem that Walker and his agenda has in Wisconsin is it's really been an attack on the middle class, starting with the attacks on bargaining rights, but then followed by the biggest cuts in public education in the entire country. This week, we're doing nothing to address jobs and unfortunately killing the wind energy jobs we could bring to the state. And next week, they'll announce uh, removing 53,000 people from Badger Care, our Medicaid program for the working poor in this state. So you can't be that much against so many people in Wisconsin and hope to get away with it. And I think that's what this recall is going to be about. What's the expectation for those 53,000 people who are going to lose their health insurance? Is there anything, any provision being made to make sure they can still get care? Well, the Republicans passed in their state budget uh, a, a, a waiver that they want to get from the federal government to, uh, instead of, you know, doing something about tax fairness and, you know, doing something about the billion dollars worth of tax breaks they gave to large corporations, they instead want to take 53,000 people off of health care. And so that's going to leave a lot of working families really desperate to figure out what to do next. One of the things that I was I was struck by in, in watching your live tweets from the supposed job session last night, also what we covered last week about what they've been working on in this job session, uh, is that there's sort of a theme. I mean, anti-abortion groups being honored, uh, sex ed being rolled back, is, issues like that that not only aren't about jobs, but are about a real specific social conservative agenda. And Republicans have not been talking to general audiences very much about social conservatism. Uh, but are, are, from your perspective as a state legislator, is that still very much what they're pushing when it comes time to actually introduce and debate bills? Yeah, I mean, we're either doing nonsense things like redefining bicycles or it's this pregnancy crisis center stuff that they're honoring. But the, the more important issue is that they're not addressing the number one issues that people care about, which are getting people back to work. I mean, Rachel, I had a town hall meeting in my district just Monday night where over 100 people showed up who were out of work, looking for work, looking to me and other elected officials and asking us, what are you going to do about this? What are you going to do to retrain people who have been displaced by the economy, to give us a fair wage so we can feed our families, so we can access health care that's affordable, and then to show up the next day at work and debate bicycles or drinking at county fairs or home brewing, all of which, none of which are bad issues in and of themselves, but they do nothing about the jobs crisis in Wisconsin. State Representative Corey Mason, Democrat of Racine, Wisconsin, thanks very much uh, for your time tonight and for your very informative and entertaining Twitter feed. Thank you, Rachel. While we all wait for the conservative promised magic of the free market to, reprieve, uh, to give us a reprieve from our chronic national economic bummer, uh, tonight's guest on the interview has his own ideas on the subject and on the Occupy Wall Street protests. He is New York Magazine writer at large, Frank Rich, and he's the interview just ahead.